Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. We're going to be speaking about a very controversial subject tonight, the other woman. Now, the typical idea of the other woman is that she's pure evil, whose only intention is to wreck relationships. But what really goes on inside her head, and why doesn't she just get her own man? So that's what we're going to be discussing today. My guest tonight, I love expert Kate McKenzie, who's going to be helping us dissect the other woman, and writer and agony aunt Karen Smedley, who will be giving advice for women over 50 who've been cheated on, among other advice as well. And we'll also be watching some sketches later on in the studio and discussing them with our experts. So if you want to get involved in this discussion, you can give me a call on 020-7686-6300. You can also email chris at chrissybshow.tv. Have you ever been cheated on or have you ever been the other woman and you'd like to give your side of things. Maybe, you know, you got caught up in something and you felt guilty about it. What do you have to say? Now, I don't know if we're going to get any calls about this tonight because it is something that people don't normally like to admit to. But if you're brave enough and you want to give us a call, please do on 020-7686-6300. And of course, you can also Facebook us on The Chrissy B Show. So to discuss, first of all, some celebs, we have the lovely Bianca with us. Hey, Chris. Hi, darling. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm well. Now, it's really nice to see you in the studio, because normally we see you in front of the camera That's out and it. about on yeah. the streets of London, That's in your it. bit. Going crazy around the streets of London. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you're with you've, us today. You've tied me into the studio today. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. nice to see you here. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice to be here for the first time. So to start off with the celeb stuff, we're going to talk about Tiger Woods. Mm. Now, he had multiple affairs, which broke up his family. It ruined his reputation and cleaned out his bank account as well. Yeah. Now, I just think that someone who is such, has got a big name like Tiger Woods, why would you put yourself through that? Because you know that you're going to get exposed and everyone's going to know what happened. And he had mm. multiple affairs. It wasn't just with one woman. There was lots of other women as well. But in his case, though, because they apparently had a sex addiction, wasn't it? Yeah. So you can kind of, I don't know, I still think sometimes people really don't think they're going to get caught, even though they are in the public eye and everyone knows them. They've got this false idea that they are going to get away with it, but yeah. they don't in the end. No, they don't. And they get followed around like anything, don't they? That's it. And he said it was the best thing that could have happened to him. And because um, he what wasn't happy, yeah. <laughs> we'll get him found out. <laughs> we'll get him found out. He said it was the best thing that happened mm. to him. And because he wasn't happy with who he was at the time. I don't think anyone would describe getting caught the best thing that happened to them, no. would you? <laughs> well, I don't Do you know think you're that. telling the truth there with that? <laughs> I don't think so. Honestly, no. No, I don't I think I think he's either. just saying that because he did get caught, because probably he would have just <laughs> yeah. carried on and like, yeah. I don't know who knows what he's getting up to now. Sorry, if you disagree with me, you can, you can call up and tell me. Well, who else do we have? I think it, with, also with him, I think he's <coughs> trying to, I think... He was trying to shock himself. What he's trying to say, I think, in that um, quote was that he was trying to do something that would shock himself and make him get caught out or whatever. And um, because he wasn't happy with who he was, he needed something big to yeah. make him change. And so he got caught and he had to change because he lost everything with that. But I don't know whether he's totally telling what the truth. What do you think? There. I don't think he's telling the truth. <laughs> and I don't think he should have done that to his wife anyway and no. his children and everything. I mm -hmm. don't think he should have done that. Um, the next person we're going to talk about is Britney Spears. Now, yeah. she was actually the other woman in this scenario with yeah. her, um, an actor, Kevin Federlane. Mm -hmm. Now, um, he was actually cheating on his girlfriend at the time. And to make things worse, the girlfriend was six months pregnant oh as well. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so that must have been really heartbreaking for her to find out about that affair that went on. And actually, Brittany and Kevin actually got married and they were married for two years. And then um, they had two boys together, mm -hmm. and actually they ended up divorcing two years later on. So it's not the best start for a relationship. I know sometimes they do, on a rare occasion they do work out. Like mm. you have an affair, then you get together with that person, get married. But it doesn't normally end up well because not there is all. that guilt. I think whatever you say, no matter what people say about the other woman, I think there's always that guilt there. Mm. And actually, I was reading something, but from another woman that she was writing about her experience, and she actually did say that. For a long time, it took them like two or three years to get past the guilt and actually be happy together because there was always that thing, I wish you know, I'd waited till they were divorced first yeah. before we started mm -hmm. the relationship, but they couldn't help themselves apparently. But there was always that guilt there that always put a strain on the relationship. Yeah, I can imagine. So theirs only lasted two years with their yeah. marriage. They had two boys and <coughs> Kevin actually won custody of the children as well. 
um, full custody. It's a bit of a mess, really, isn't it? It was a yeah. complete, complete mess. I mean, I was reading up about it, and then there was a part that said that Brittany actually locked herself in her room with one of the children to try it because she knew that they were taking that child away. Mm. So she locked herself in the room and wouldn't let it to get the police round to actually open the doors and get the child for, get let the child free. Yeah. So it's like just a, such a messy situation. And even for the children, it's like you mm. don't want to see your parents going through that. It's just awful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So yeah, that was Brittany. And then um, David Beckham's other woman was his assistant, Rebecca Lewis. Do you oh. remember that story? Yes, I remember that. It was everywhere, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Now, um, when but apparently had, it wasn't true. What do you mean, the actual affair wasn't yeah. true? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we kept hearing. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> I think it's true. I don't <laughs> when the affair went public, um, Victoria Beckham did something really unusual and she stood by David as well, which was quite strange, isn't it, for someone to find out. Did he actually admit to it in the end? I think so, yeah. Did he? Yeah, he, she's admitted to it as well. So I think he's always tried to cover it up, but she's been yeah. really open and honest as well. Like, I mean, recently... Sorry, guys, I'm a bit sort of slow with things that happen in the news. <laughs> I don't have much time to watch the news or read papers or anything. So I'm like, OK, I'm learning. Yeah, Too busy. Learning. Yeah. And um, recently, literally like a few weeks ago, Rebecca um, went on a, a, a morning show, a television mm. show, chat show, and she tried to sort of clear her name again. And this was like, this was recently. So even now, she still feels like she's um, being looked down on and she's, she's being seen as this horrible other woman, which is what you were saying earlier, so yeah. it's stereoty stereotype of that type of woman. And she's still trying to clear her name that she, she, she said it was, they were both involved and it wasn't just her and um, she feels really that's sorry thing, about it. People just focus on the other woman. What about the man that's actually that's having the affair as well? I think the thing with that though, because David is like loved by everyone, isn't he? Mm. He's like, the things that he does and um, everything he does, like people, he can't put his foot wrong really, can he, David? No. So I think no one knew Rebecca, so they immediately point, pinpointed her, I think, and said, yeah. you know, it's got to be her, nothing, our David, it wouldn't hurt our David, you know? So I think we definitely, it was, it was like, no one knew who she was, mm. so she was sort of immediately got all the blame for everything that went on. Yeah. But I, who knows, who knows who started it, we don't know. Mm. Obviously the most well-known one I, I, even I know about is Angelina Jolie. And <laughs> That's it. Because that was a big thing, wasn't it? Yes, exactly. And everyone felt sorry for Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, exactly. But the thing, the twist in that is that Jennifer Aniston started her romance with an actor called Justin Ferox, and which broke up his 14-year relationship. And she did this after she got cheated on by um, Brad Why Pitt. Why would she do that? That's it. After she knows what it feels like to go through that. Why would she go there? I don't know. But it happens. I, I looked at it. I looked up about it. And it ha it's happening quite a lot where celebs will, who get cheated on will go on and cheat on someone else in the future but I don't know whether it's they because they're hurt and they want to like let themselves feel a bit better or something I don't mm. know but surely yeah. if, if you if you know who, what the pain feels like you wouldn't want to put that on anyone else would you well you, you always get those kind of people that when they are hurt they will just kind of they don't care anymore they just want to get everyone back yeah so they will start hurting other people on purpose it's like the person that sort of for example gets I've, and I've heard this this before it's, it's true there's some people for example they get for example, something like AIDS, and cause, because they have it, they want other people to have it as well. And I know of a particular case where this guy just decided to sleep with as many women as he could because he wanted to infect That's as many awful. women as he could because he had this kind of hatred towards the woman that infected him. So sometimes it's a horrible thing, but it does happen. But People want to, to pass it on, yeah, <laughs> pass awful. the hurt on kind of thing. But what about everyone else who's innocent and didn't do exactly, anything? Exactly, but some people don't think. And also I think it might be in this scenario that with the celebs that are cheating on someone else in the future, I think it might be that they want to find a bit of happiness for themselves. Now they've yeah. lost out on a partner, they want to do something <clears throat> to make them feel happy. They're, they're sort of putting it, it's quite a selfish thing to do, I think. Mm. They've put themselves forward and they know that they're getting with someone who's actually already married or might have a girlfriend, but they're just, yeah. they've, they've been hurt in the past. They just want to mm. do anything hurt, to get obviously. themselves their happiness, which is not an ideal situation, but okay. Yeah, I think we've got time for a Facebook comment as well, if you've got one. Uh, yes, I do actually. So we've got it's Phil. It's flying today. We're going to break in a second. Go on, they're, they're moaning at me already. So we've got um, Phil Musi says, <laughs> okay, that a there shouldn't be another woman, um, <coughs> there shouldn't be another woman, what does it say? There shouldn't be another woman, they oh, should stop. <laughs> there shouldn't <laughs> be another woman. <laughs> There shouldn't be another woman yet. Yeah. <laughs> it says, so show some respect, men. Uh, shame on you. If you truly love your lady, she should be the one and your only. Yes, so let's blame the men true. in this. 
or part blame the men in this because <laughs> they are responsible too. <laughs> but if you want to give your opinion, you want to email or Facebook, please do so. The Chris CB Show or you can email Chris at chriscbshow.tv. And after the break, we're going to be joined by our first expert. So join us in a second. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Well, we are discussing the other woman. So let's introduce our first guest, Kate McKenzie. Hello, Kate. Hello. Hi, Chrissy. How are hi. you? Very good, thank you. Lovely to be here. So interesting topic. Yes. But first of all, can you tell the viewers what you do? I'm a love coach and mm. a psychosexual therapist. So I work mm. with individuals and couples and groups to help them open up to love and mm. uh, to their core self, to want what they want and live the life they want. Okay. And what do you think about um, this topic that we're talking about tonight? Because it's not something that I sort of see on TV much or people really discussing because it is quite controversial and most people don't like to admit to affairs and like be, or being the other woman or cheating on their wife, for example. So, but I think it's quite important to talk about. It's wonderfully important because <coughs> this, is the, this is the difficulty often is that uh, people live with the shame of lying mm. and then don't know how to share that and how to mm. even to begin to share it. Whereas actually... Um, if they could become more authentic and more honest and bring more of themselves back into their relationship, they yeah. might not want to seek elsewhere or if they discovered what it was they were missing while they were looking for someone or, mm -hmm. or the other way around, if a woman would discover why she's looking for unavailable partners and why she's yeah. doing that. Uh, so Do you I've think she's evil, the other woman? No, I don't think anyone's evil. Mm -hmm. I think that um, people do things for different reasons and... and there are times when people are lost mm -hmm. and they don't value themselves. Yeah. And there can be all kinds of unconscious reasons why people are looking to do things. So it, it can be something that someone would say, I would never have an affair. I would never go for a marriage I, man. I don't, I, would never. I don't think anyone sets out to, to no. go for someone that's... Sorry, no. guys, I've got a bit of flu, so I might be sort of sniveling and <laughs> wiping my nose every now and excuse me. So I don't, I don't think anyone um, <clears throat> sets out with the goal, I'm going to get a married man or I'm going to go for someone that already is with someone because it's just, it's not a thing to do. You know, no. it's not right. Mm. But they get caught up in that kind of life. They do. And also we have uh, shadow sides of us, which are often we don't know about or we're mm. not living out. Or we're not living out our potential or what we really want. And we suddenly see someone, we project onto them that they are this person. They're this person with all mm. this potential and all this love and we've got to have them. And actually, again, if it's, if it's back to you being authentic and finding out what mm. do you want, how do you want to live your life, you might not be grabbing at this, you know, this figure that yeah. you think is so important. When I know for someone, for example, I know a few people and relatives actually got caught up in this kind of situation, I would call it. But um, there's one in particular that <coughs> she started going out with this, <coughs> sorry, this person. And then she went around to his house one day and then she saw a letter um, and she saw Mrs. and the surname of the person. And at that point, um, she, she found out basically that he was married and she was very shocked and everything. But then she ended up staying in a relationship for about 14 years because she just, because he kept telling her, look, you know, we're not together. Um, we're, we're sleeping in separate rooms. We don't love each other anymore. We're just staying together because of the children. And she, she went along with it for years and the relationship ended up being horrible in, anyway. But it's just she, she didn't have that kind of strength or I would say that the confidence in herself, mm. self-esteem to get mm. out of that and say, mm. okay, this is not for me. Mm. I'm going to move on and I'm going to find someone that's not attached to anyone. And she stayed in like that for years. And then it happened again after that. She met another person. She met another like person that. that was married. Again, the same story. Um, you know, um, we're together, but we're actually in the process of a divorce. Mm -hmm. And she was actually waiting around for him to get a divorce. And then in the end, he said, "Look, sorry, this isn't for me. I'm going to stay with my wife. I've decided to stay with her." Obviously, she was heartbroken. Mm. And I was telling her, "Look, just don't jump into another relationship. Take your time. Work on yourself first." And you'll meet the right person, but she just keeps falling for these unavailable guys. So there's something for her to look at, a deeper pattern, perhaps mm. something from her childhood around yeah. lying mm -hmm. and believing something else and not waking up to lying, not looking at something because she's having to repeat being with people who are yeah. telling her untruths. 
So there's, there's something much deeper sometimes going, perhaps like people who are living with an addict yeah. who's hiding their addiction. Perhaps <coughs> it's the same sort of And the same she's sort of such thing. a lovely person. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think that she would ever sort of do something like that, but she's such a sweet person. She's very kind, she's very loving, and it's like she just got caught up in, in the situation. Not that I'm justifying it, because I think, you know, when you know something's wrong, it's wrong. But well, at that's the same the thing. time... You know, some people... <coughs> don't value themselves enough yeah. to put themselves first mm -hmm. and exactly. so they'll accept crumbs and they'll accept yeah. lies yeah. and then they don't even know they're accepting and after a while they've accepted it for so long they can't even remember what it was like mm -hmm. to be any different but there is a possibility that they can change that but it just me yeah. might mean they have to start opening up and recognizing mm -hmm. what they're doing and why they're doing it and I have another relative <laughs> so I have to say I'm, I'm going to talk about this one as well she didn't know, basically. She was going out with this, this guy. She had a child with him. And um, she f when she found out that he was married, she just broke it off immediately. But that's another situation because a lot of women, they're already in, they don't know that the guy's married and they get involved in this relationship. Then they fall in love and they, they even have children with this guy only to find out that later on that he's married. And it's, I think it's so difficult once the person's had children and you've you know, got that bond... With the, with the person, it's very hard to break away after It's very it. hard to break away if you kiss them or have sex with them, mm -hmm. you know, because it's very hard if you've created any kind that of bond with yeah. someone mm -hmm. and you want to just ignore the rest. Um, so it, 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 the whole thing can be quite hard if you've let yourself get involved with someone yeah. and you, you, haven't, you didn't know that they were, they were not free. Mm -hmm. And then you find out they weren't, they're not free and you're, you feel trapped because there's this hope that they're yeah. going to be free, that they're going to leave for you. And very rarely, very rarely do they leave uh, their wife. They can be, they mm -hmm. can do, but it's very rare. So the advice is, ladies, if you find out, try and break away as soon as possible. I, if I you suppose. can, but you might need to do some work on yourself. You might need to build your self-esteem. You might need to build your confidence. Yeah. You might need to find out why would you have done that in the first place? Why mm. would you accept so little for yourself? I, do you think, though, Kate, that the, there are women that will actually go out and, on purpose to wreck relationships, as we were speaking about earlier with, with Bianca? Because I think there are some women that are intent, or maybe they're not happy themselves, or they've been hurt in the past, mm. and they are intent on not seeing anyone happy. Mm. And they will, even if they don't love the guy, they don't sort of even fancy him remotely, but they know he's married, they know he's in a relationship, mm. so they will go and on purpose try and break yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that can be another dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, which is that there isn't enough in the world and I'm going to have what's not mine mm -hmm. and I don't care about anyone else. It can be another dynamic about scarcity thinking, mm -hmm. you know, where people are actually quite frightened and quite vulnerable and quite sensitive too, but they've got this scarcity thinking and they're in a competitive world and they think it's a pack world where they've got to get what they want and mm -hmm. maybe they see the guy and they think, I'm having him. I mean, I've run workshops where... Um, around meeting your soulmate and uh, ask people what would you like and they go Brad Pitt well Brad Pitt's <laughs> taken and they go no I want Brad Pitt and it's so that interesting <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting but a lot of people will name a married person mm. of course that's a famous person but you think well how about a free person how about someone for you and I think sometimes people think there's only this one amazing person and even if he's married I could have him and it sometimes Allowing yourself to drop down and say, there's plenty for everyone, and how about someone who's free, and how about someone for you? And that's maybe that's thing. vulnerable for people mm -hmm. to be a bit softer about it. I don't believe there's only one person out mm. there for any other, like, the perfect match. I think there are lots of mm. people that will be compatible for yeah. you, that aren't single, that don't have any ties or anything, but it's just some people, because they, like you said, they think that it's just that one, yes. they, if they, they won't be happy if yeah. it's not that one. And there's no one. one else, and that's probably why they yeah. don't leave the married one. Yeah. They're probably thinking, there's no one else, and if I don't get this, and if I don't have him, you know, and you're just taking crumbs. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're not saying, well, actually, I could, I could have a wonderful life. I could really have what I want. And perhaps there's a deep belief they can't. Mm. I think everyone deserves to be loved mm. exclusively. Mm. And I think it's really sad. I'd, because when I, when I look at the relationship that I have with my husband, mm. I, it's just so lovely to just be loved by, by him, like vice versa as well. And to think of women that are sort of sh feel like they have to share in a way, because sometimes the wife knows or the... the, the person that's been cheated on, they, they know that there's another woman and they, they also 
decide to stay in a relationship because they don't want to lose this this man. And now knowing sort of what I know and how it is just to have the one person and have that person love you exclusively and, and the other way around, it's like I really feel I feel sad because it's like I know these women are missing out and they, they could have the same. They could have, you know, one person that's going to love them and them mm. alone. Mm. But it's like they don't believe that they can have that. And, and you know, and the thing about this, nothing's an ending. What I mean is that it's all a journey because <clears throat> what you're talking about is you're really yourself. Mm -hmm. You're really doing the, the work you love to do. Yeah. You're really yourself in your partnership. And the reason why I say this, because I work with individuals and, and with couples in, in partnerships where they perhaps haven't shared everything and haven't brought mm. all of themselves to the table or they aren't fully themselves in work. And there's, even wherever anyone is at, they can grow these parts. So they yeah. can grow more authentic. They can, even if your partner's had an affair, if you choose to stay with your partner and you mm. can get through the trust issues, you can grow a deeper, more authentic relationship. Because a lot of marriages uh, aren't that great because mm. people aren't sharing deeply with each other yeah. or being open. And the, the thing with an affair, sometimes it's a symptom to show a marriage what isn't there. And if mm. people choose to, they could make that deeper, more, or open their lives up to, to a greater life. Do you think the wife's ever to blame? Well, this is the thing, is that, is that if, if a couple could look at an affair as a symptom mm. and look at, okay, what's going, what's going on in this relationship? Why is my partner looking outside? What are they looking for? And not, not to dismiss the betrayal and not to dismiss the hurt, to yeah. honour that too, to honour both sides of the coin, the, the, the hurt person and the person who's done something. But actually, you know, sometimes I know a couple and she was pushing and pushing and pushing for a child and they would both had children and mm -hmm. he didn't really want any more. She was actually pushing for commitment. It really wasn't about the child, but right. she was on a mission. She thought that if she, she had, had a child, if she had the they'll child, be closer. They'll be closer, exactly. That never and, works. Right? No. <laughs> it and, just drives and, people apart sometimes. That's right. And he went and had an affair. Mm. And uh, she came and uh, chatted to me. And I said, look, I really feel you're meant to be together. I really felt that about this couple. Mm. And um, so they decided to do couple counselling. And they discovered that he was feeling pushed away oh. by her demands, not more connected. Yeah. And they worked it through. And it really wasn't about the child. It was about commitment. Worked it okay. through, came back together. And he asked her to marry. Mm -hmm. He asked her to marry him. And they have the happiest relationship ever wow. because they both got what they wanted, which was deeper, yeah. more intimate, loving connection not pushing him into anything or pushing her into anything. You just never know, do you, what, what's really behind everything. That's I think there's on. often uh, things going on which can be resolved, but it's whether the two people want to and yeah. can do, because sometimes the trust when broken is hard for some people to get over. But Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to read, um, an, well, it's a comment from someone that is the other woman, just before we go to break, let me make sure I've got the right one. Okay, so this is someone that is actually the other woman. She says, still stuck in the rut, turning in fourth year soon. The relationship is like stock market, down most of the time. Don't know why I'm in this mess, never intended to be in one. Started with him, then he confessed he's married. So there's a situation where she was already started to go out with him and then she found out. The fall was deep and don't know how to get out. Get deeper, get deeper each day, even though we are thousands of miles apart. Have tried letting go many, many times. The more I fight the feeling, the more I want him. Moving to another country does not seem to help. Every day is a losing battle and she signed it lost. Aww. So, you know, like I said, you know, with, with these people, I can understand, okay, we have this horrible image of the other woman, but in a case like this, she find, finds out afterwards she's already involved, she thinks that this guy is her everything, which, by the way, I've always talked about this, never make anyone your everything, be confident in yourself. But it's like, you can see the sadness there, because she's trying to let go, and she, she can't. Mm. But I really think, you know, I think you can, you just have to get mm. the right counselling, the right mm. help, and you can, you can break free from that. Mm. And you deserve to be with someone that's going to love you exclusively. Mm. I'm going to keep drumming that in, but we're going to go to a quick break, and then afterwards we're going to be discussing much more about this subject, because we're going to have another expert coming on to chat with us. Join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before I introduce my next guest, let's just read a couple of comments from 
some angry people here about the other woman. Uh, this one's called Honor Forever, and she says, do you ever ask yourself why the man married the other woman and not you? You are right. If it wasn't you, they could have found others because unfortunately, trash like you is abundant and you will get one. And one day you will get your just reward for your evil actions. Adulterous men always blame the wife to cause piety on those brainless women like you that opt to believe that the wife deserves to be betrayed. I would love to see how you would react when your husband, if you're good enough to find one, does the same thing you did to others. May God forgive you for your selfish and immoral life. And another one, Jay, says, wrong is wrong. We're all adults and will be held accountable for our actions. One sin does not outweigh the other. The cheating spouse is just as guilty as the party they cheat with. If you're the other woman or other man, do not feel you're less responsible for these actions. You're just as guilty. It's wrong no matter how you look or try to sugarcoat it to make yourself feel better. Don't try to justify your actions. Correct them. So that, oh, signed a real woman. So, okay, some very strong views there. So maybe, I don't know if these women have been cheated on before and that's why they feel so strongly or they don't understand sometimes that some of these women, they don't know what they're getting themselves into. They don't know the man's, you know, with someone already. So, you know, there are sides to the story as well. So I don't want to sort of, okay, you have your opinion, but let's look at the other side of things as well. So let's introduce, first of all, Karen Smedley. Hello, Hello, Karen. Hello, very nice to be here. I'd, I'd love to see you here. Now, you, you do quite a lot, don't you? Can you talk us through some of the yes, things that yes, you do? Yes, I do. I do a mixture of things. I'm an executive personal and life coach, mm -hmm. and I'm a writer, and I'm an agony aunt for Women's Weekly. Okay, so you get a lot of people writing to you I about do. any lot of these particular situations, People do write, yes, of course, about both being the other woman and feeling bad about the situation they're in. Often, mm -hmm. they do feel as though they're the understudy. They don't actually get the things that they want f from the relationship. Right. So often they're the people who at their birthdays or Christmases or holidays are on their own and also of course from women who have been cheated on and who feel terrible. Mm. So um, do you ever get anyone that writes in and says you know I love what I'm doing and I want to get women back or, or I, I don't care that you know I'm the other woman or do you find that most of them will say look they do feel guilty and I think there are a few people, um, but they're not necessarily the ones that write to me, who mm. actually have decided that that's the role they want because they don't want to get into a committed relationship. Mm. And it's a way of actually having a relationship without being, co being committed into it. Yeah. Um, but I think they're very few. Okay. Okay, we're just going to take this caller and see what they have to say as well. Good evening. Hi, good evening, Chrissy. Hello. What's your name? Serena. Hi, Serena. So, what did you have to say about this? What do you think of the other woman? Um, well, it, it, it's difficult sometimes because um, I'm, I was the other woman one time, but... Really? Yeah, when I met the partner, he said that he, he never had anybody. Okay. And then as the conversations went on, then he said, the woman that lives in my house. And then I clicked on, I'm thinking, what do you mean the woman that lives in your house? He's like, oh yeah, I'm married, but we're not together. And like he made it sound like no, they were they were separated. They wasn't getting on, and they were just living in the house for the mm -hmm. kids. So I don't know you, you you carry on, carry on, and it went like it went like that for maybe two years, and then after a while, mm -hmm. I mean, I got tired. Like you're not leaving her, you know. Mm -hmm. it, Did you it, feel guilty during those two years that you knew knew he was married, or was it like because he convinced you that they weren't really together? He convinced me that they wasn't really together, so mm -hmm. I didn't feel guilty, and because. I could see that um, he had to look after the kids all the time, you know, she wasn't really looking after them and he was taking them to school, dropping them off, doing like everything that the mother would do. So that also made me think, well, maybe what he was saying was true. Mm. But even after I left and a couple of years later, they were still together. And I think it's only now that, you know, they're starting to separate. But, you know, what if I had waited all that time? It's like, yeah. it's, it's just a waste. You're wasting your life, really. And I just think that... Um, it's not always, I mean, the other woman is, you know, in a bad position in the world, but I think it's down to the men as well, because they, yeah. they obviously, they know that they're married. And they seem to get away a bit scot-free, don't they, sometimes? Yeah, they, they're looking for somebody else, and, yeah. you know. What, how do you feel about yourself now, about your love life? Are you, are you single? Are you with someone? No, I'm single at the moment, mm -hmm. but... Um, Oh no, I would, I would um I would never go out with a married man now. You know, there's there's, there's too many questions that would have to be asked and yeah. too many, you know, you have to look for little signs and all those things, so you mm -hmm. just have to be vigilant nowadays anyway. All right. But do you believe you can be happy with someone or has that kind of experience put you off? Oh no, no, no. I do believe there's there's somebody out there for everybody. You just right. have to take your time. <laughs> 
All right, all the best for the future then. Okay, thanks very Thank much. Thank you so much for your call. Bye. Bye. The men get off scot-free sometimes, Karen. Men do get off <laughs> scot-free, and actually the problem with, with affairs is there are three people who end up by getting hurt. Mm -hmm. The man gets hurt, the partner gets hurt, and the other woman gets hurt. Mm -hmm. And it's really about thinking beforehand about what am I doing. And if, like this woman, you didn't know beforehand that, you, that they were with someone, as soon as you do, you have a choice. And mm -hmm. however hard it is, it's actually about saying, no, this isn't any good for me, this isn't what I want. And interestingly, statistically, only about 3% of affairs lead on to somebody leaving and being with someone. Really? And what very often happens... 3%, yes, gosh. What there you go, I bet you didn't know that statistic. <laughs> that, that it's, it's, yeah. ve it's very few, and what happens very often is that if people do leave, because as you said before, there's all the guilt, what mm. happens is they split up their marriage and they move on to somebody else. Wow. The other thing that's really important is if someone's going to leave, they do it fairly soon. It isn't that it goes on for months right. and years and whatever, because if they were going to do it, they do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, someone does fall in love and they say, I've got to leave my marriage, and that's not necessarily a good solution. But if they decide to do it, they do it early on. So being the other woman for years, that's what it's going to be, More, you know, nine times out of ten. Why, apart from thinking that the, the, this guy is going to be with them, why do you think some women stay in, in these kind of relationships? I think they do believe that they will eventually go mm. and I think they also hear from the man what a rotten time he's having with this awful partner <laughs> or wife that he's got. She's so uh, horrible yes. to me, she, she nags me all the time, all these excuses, right? <laughs> and, right. And, I'll stay yeah. and, and I'll stay and look after you and yeah. I'll make it nice for you. And actually the reality is if you're only with someone for a few hours a week, you know, I could be really nice for a few hours a week. It's mm. the rest of the time when relationships are more difficult yeah. and everyday chores are more difficult. And if all you're doing is seeing someone for a few hours and you're going out and having great sex, it's very unrealistic. Yeah, it's not the real relationship, no, it is isn't. it? it Gosh. isn't. Well, we do have a sketch to show you. I don't know if we've got time for it now. I think it's about, yeah, we've, okay, we've got time for it. Maybe we'll discuss it after, after the break. And then also, I'm, I'm really interested to hear about you know, women that are over 50 that mm -hmm. they're cheated on and how to sort of get back on their sure. feet again. So we'll talk about that as well after the break. So let's just take a look at like, this sketch first. This is... This is, this is wonderful. It is wonderful. I know you're married, Dave, but, you know, I don't mind. She won't know. But what about everyone at work? Oh, I'll just... Be careful. It's discreet. Yeah, that will be very exciting, won't it? What do you reckon he's up to, do you think? I don't know. I don't want to to say be it. honest. Yeah. I don't want to say it. I don't oh. want to admit it. Yeah. I think he might be seeing someone else. Well, you don't really know that though, for sure. <sighs> to be honest, I can sense it. Really? I think you you know, as a woman you know these things. You know when your husband mm. stops paying an yeah, interest okay, in yeah. you. If you know, you know. I'm just trying to figure out who the hell it is. Right. I mean, I, who would, it can't be a friend. No. I mean, I can't, I can't conceive it being someone I know. No. Who would, who would do that to me? Someone very, very evil. Someone horrible and evil and cruel. And I can't believe they'd ever do this to you. You're such a good person and you've got three children and you've been together for so many years. I'll sort dinner out tonight, don't worry. Yeah, don't worry, the kids will go off. Sorry, you're breaking up a bit. And I, th I think I'm going to have to go. Yeah, I'll speak to you later, right? Love you. Bye. Hiya. Hi. Hi, are you alright? Yeah. Hi. You alright? Yeah, how are you? I'm not too bad. I'm glad you can make it again. Missed you. <laughs> I missed you too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You really brighten up my day, kind of thing. Yeah? Oh, that is so sweet. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> just the things back in the real world are they're just too much. So you really oh, brighten no. up the day, and it's, it's really nice to see you. I mean, yeah. I'm glad you take the time to come and see me. Like oh, this. I know. I love coming to see you. You know. Would you want to go away for the weekend then? Oh, I'd love to. Where do you want to go? You pick. I have an open company credit card. Oh, do what we want. Where do you want to go? Oh, I'd love to go to Spain. Oh, is um, Linda not joining us tonight? Uh, no, no, Linda's not joining us. No, no, no. She's oh, why um, not? Uh, she's a 
babysitting. She's looking after the kids. Oh, okay. Yeah. Babysitting her own kids. And I bumped into her the other day. Oh, yeah. yeah she's Where? looking really well. Yeah, um, yeah. It just she was shopping with the kids. It was on the weekends, but um, she's looking really oh, well. She likes to shop. She likes to shop. And you were saying you've been working so hard and that we need to stop working you so hard. And I was yeah, like, oh, we're not yeah. that bad, are we? Well, yeah, so, uh, you know, all the overtime, she, she would rather have me at home, but, you know. Well, you don't do any more overtime than I do. Well, <laughs> You know, but it's the travelling and everything. The way she said it, it's like we're, we're like, you know, killing you here or something. Well, she's on the phone. I felt really bad. She, she does exaggerate. <laughs>
you know, had an adrenaline rush and I'm feeling yeah. excited, or is this really something that I want to pursue? And let's just look at it rationally as well. Uh -huh. And what often we do is we just go straight in there, yeah. and then we're sunk, as people have said. I, mean, I used to get a lot of butterflies in my stomach when I first met my husband mm. and we started going out. That kind of wore off after a while. <laughs> I get it occasionally. I don't know how it sort of comes to me sometimes, but it's, that wears off after a while because you get into that connection with the person, Absolutely. you get used to them in a sense, and like you just become comfortable, and that's when the love really develops, I think. But all that stuff is sort of like teenage stuff, really, sometimes. Well, it's, it's, a deeper, yeah, sorry. it's a deeper attachment yeah. Yeah. That, that you get, which then lasts. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because affairs are often staying just in the mm. first mm. phase. Yeah. They don't necessarily, mm. although they can get attached, sure. they're often just staying in that, that first yeah. phase where they never can form a vision mm. or go mm. further. So they're just staying in the heightened that's so state. And that's why it can it be very so high sense. and very low, yeah. like any addiction. It can be yeah. like an addiction where, you, where someone feels trapped and stuck in something that they don't know where it, what's going to happen and they, they feel their life's yeah. on hold. That is so interesting. OK, let's move on to the next slide. <laughs> now, this one we were discussing during the break, but I think, it, as we said, it's, it's a whole topic in itself and we are going to do another show on this. I've, we've decided already right, <laughs> to do another show on it. And that's for women like, um, say, over 50 that are cheated on. How a lot of them think that they can't recover from that and you know, maybe often it's like a younger woman and they think, oh my gosh, I, I just can't compete. How does a woman pick herself up? In, like, we've got a few minutes, but how does she, how can she pick herself up after something like that? I think it's really hard to pick yourself up by yourself. Mm. So I really think, you know, if you're feeling that low, and I understand that feeling, is to really get some help, to yeah. really look at what's going on in our relationship. Nobody actually has affairs and cheats if everything's 100% great. Mm. So something's not working, and it can be not working for a lot of reasons. And it's easy to just go either, you know, um, I'm no good and I've got to let him go, or he's awful, he's got to go. It's something about saying, what's happened here and what can we do to look at our relationship and to enhance it mm -hmm. and not get into that thing of, well, because I'm over 50, I'm no longer attractive, no one's going to, to fancy me. But that's me. the first thing that and comes, isn't and it? And that can often happen to people. Yeah. That's the first thing that comes to like an old, I guess, an older woman's mind because I think it's um, the first thing that they think of, and they don't look at the other, maybe the other things, the other contributing factors. Perhaps they just assume it's oh, it's my age, just because I'm not as young or as pretty as her. When you, but by the way, you're very attractive already because <laughs> a lot of women don't see that. Yes. They think once they reach a really certain age, they're not attractive anymore, which is completely false. Yeah, I mean, if there, there could be one message: is you don't have to give up your marriage or your mm. partnership because of an affair. Yeah. Actually, exactly, exactly, exactly as Karen said, you can look at what could grow. And I think with uh, some women, they think, all oh, right, I'm out of the picture. That's not necessarily the case. If mm. you can maybe get some help and get hold of what do you want? Would you like to grow your marriage to another yeah. level and, mm. and see what's possible? But that trust, I'm just thinking, like, I can't imagine myself in that situation. I don't know what I would do, honestly. But I, I, I think for some, like, once that trust is broken, I think... It's very hard to get that back, isn't it? It's, it's very tough. It's very tough. Mm. An affair is very, very tough. And yet, um, if there were things that were missing in the relationship and you were just trundling along together, not that happily, mm -hmm. if you could go through, and it's not saying that's easy, but if you could go through that and meet each other again authentically, yeah. you could actually have, uh, on an existential level, the, the marriage of your dreams. Mm -hmm. And it's not blaming what happens is we get into blame mm. rather than saying, I wonder what's been going on here and what can we do about it? Mm, rather yeah. than it's his fault or it's my fault or it's somebody's fault or it's a woman's fault. It's actually about, let's just take stock and actually think about, is there enough in this marriage for us to actually work on? Mm. Or is it actually a relationship that needs to end and let's end it in a way that's mm. honourable and good for both of us and also very often good for your kids? Mm. Because it's yeah. uh, even if you're older with older kids, they also hope their parents would yeah, always stay together. That's true. That's true. So we've got a couple of minutes left. What final message would you give for the other woman, maybe that's watching now, or maybe a woman that's considering getting into a relationship with someone that's already attached? If you can, maybe you speak, can have say, what you want. You can have what you truly desire. So if you go mm. really much, a slightly t take a moment to drop into yourself yeah. and ask yourself, what do you really want? So beyond just the attraction or the lust or the being drawn to this person who's not available, mm -hmm. 
go to the essence and say, do I, would I like someone really for me who's available and would I like that for myself? Mm -hmm. That might take a bit of work, actually, to learn how to open up mm -hmm. and to receive that because some people feel scared of committing, mm -hmm. as, as was said before. But if what you really want is an available relationship, then work on yourself and go for that. Yeah. Great advice, Kerry. And I say to the other woman, stop waiting. Mm -hmm. Because if you just wait, you might miss out on your life. Mm -hmm. And if someone's not going to leave and hasn't left you, then say, yes, this was a good relationship for a, the, a while as it was, but actually I need something, as you say, for myself and to mm -hmm. do something different. Mm -hmm. Okay, ladies, thank you so much for the great advice. It was brilliant, and I really hope we've helped our viewers tonight. And, you know, if there are any women watching that are in these situations, maybe you were kind of expecting us to be, you know, call you evil and, like, you know, get your own man... But I think, I always think there's two sides to everything. And like, if you are in that kind of situation, there is, I think there is a problem inside of you. So, you know, there's, there's nothing that you can't change. I, I'm a firm believer that anyone can change. If, you know, something's happened to you in the past, or, you know, if you've lost your confidence in some way, and you don't, you don't think you deserve anything better. Well, I can tell you, you definitely do deserve. You're special as well. No matter what's happened, maybe you're feeling really guilty about things that have happened, that things that you've done. But with the right help, the right counselling, you can find yourself and you can be happy. So if you want more advice, uh, the details of our expert will be up on the website, chrissybshow.tv. And you can also email me as well if you want to talk to me, chris at chrissybshow.tv. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time on The Chrissy B Show. Bye-bye for now. So whistling ducks, do they actually whistle then? Yep, yeah, they literally whistle. That's why they're called whistling ducks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they whistle. Give a little whistle. Tell us a bit about this place. Hi, Emily. Hey. How are you? Right, how are <laughs> and, you? and who's this down here? This trying to eat Calypso, my jacket. This is Calypso. Okay. The younger one. Uh, She's trying to eat my going. back. Two, one. Hi, I'm here with Emily from the Golders Hill Park. Oh, hold on a minute. Right. Okay. Right. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Hill. <laughs> Sorry. She's coming again. Wait, 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 wait. Look like she's crunching it. Oh no, she's okay. Don't worry, I like, I like that. <laughs> what happened? Okay, then? let me do my jacket up. She'll try to take my necklace. Okay, you owe me a necklace, young lady. <laughs> <laughs>